ladies and gentlemen, if you have seen Avengers Infinity War, you are going to be very happy over the next 30 to 72 hours. Um, yeah, we're going full force. We are about to go in depth, spoiler filled conversation with the two people behind the screenplay. Um, gentlemen, yes, thank, you, thank you so much for coming in to, um, to really go in depth on the making of this movie and to answer fans' questions and our questions and uh, really just talk about the making of the film. You bet. Pleasure being here. Pleasure. Um, I have a lot of questions, okay. and we're going to start with the most important one. Mm. Uh, how do the fans' tears taste? <laughs> mm, so sweet. Yeah. So very, very sweet. Earned. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's been a weird experience. I mean, we've been sitting on this for a long time. We've known that this is um, uh, a conclusion we wanted to get to. In working on the screenplays for both movies, we didn't know when we would do this necessarily, and early on settled on the end of the first one. Um, it's, and then you get into marketing, and then you know, you know, you get into, you, know, you don't want to spoil the movie for people. So I think a lot of people were caught off guard, in a way that we sort of had no longer been caught. Well, off yeah, guard. I mean, it's also we've been, we've known the ending for yeah, okay. you know quite a long time, and you know, it's a pain to shoot and. Mm -hmm. The, the emotional content has lo has long been left in the dust. So then you see people gasping, and you're like, what? What? <laughs> Have you been in a screening, though? Because uh, there, I I've seen it now twice, and there are times at, at the end of the movie yeah. where people are like, fl they flip out, because yeah. they don't even think that maybe some of this could be, Well, you this know. is by design, yeah. right? We gave Thor a very specific arc that when you thought people were losing, ah, it's going to be okay because that guy got that thing and he's coming back and he's going to drive that thing into his chest. And so you are an audience member who has a lot of narrative mm -hmm. under your belt and you know how things are going to end. And so we use that to our advantage to sort of put you off balance. Um, I think that worked. You know, uh, completely. Yeah. Right, so normally, I like to come up with questions. Like as we're doing the interview, I have them all in my head. But because this is such a specific, I want to get answers to so many things. I actually wrote a lot of stuff down. No okay. um, So I'm actually going to be reading some stuff uh, just to make sure I can get everything. We have to uh, write our answers next time. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Uh, they have not seen these questions, by the way. So they, I've purposely kept them from them, so they have no idea what's coming. Uh, was the final shot in the movie with Thanos looking at the sunset? always the final shot. How did you hit upon the last image of the movie? I suppose we talked about whether it ought to be a tag or the final shot, but because it really is, it's the story. It's not like a little something extra. It's the end. Uh, but it was always there. We always wanted, because there's that famous frame from the comics where pretty much the same thing. He's sitting there, he's in his robe, he's done, he's happy, and it's so peaceful, and you, you, you don't get peaceful frames in comics, period. Mm -hmm. And it's the bad guy, and he's all chilled out, and it's, it was, we all pointed at it and went like, that's, that's where one, we're going. one of the frames on the wall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how is Marvel gonna promote Spider-Man Homecoming Part Two? <laughs> Look, Someone else two, hour, <laughs> two hours of Aunt May crying. <laughs> it, it could be great. That's right. It could be great. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question, and it certainly leads to bigger questions about, you know, um, audience expectation and if you know too much about uh, how Hollywood works or, you know, uh, release schedules or things like that, does it hurt your enjoyment of the movie? Well, but clearly, if there are people crying in articles about how yeah. to counsel your children at the end of it, yeah. It doesn't matter what you know. <laughs> right. You know, you're still... Right. And we can't make movies for people who, you know, read variety. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, completely. It's yeah. just one of those things where, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's gonna no, be, I'm with you. It's because a, they're going to start filming it, and yeah. people will be like, wait, what? And, you know? It's... it's. So you're saying that Spider-Man could survive saying in stay War. off the internet for a year. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, a while ago, uh, when Infinity War was very early, in early development, uh, Feige said that a lot of Infinity War had yet to be decided, but some of it was planned to microscopic detail. Mm. True, not true? Uh, true. Sure, I mean, that last panel, I mean, you know, this was, had been coming for a long time. Um, but, you know, Marvel's great at always making the movie in front of them. You've probably heard this, you know, sure. in every interview you do. They, they try to use everything they can, and they'll, they're confident that more stuff will, will, will appear uh, as movies progress. Yeah. But I think, I mean, we always knew, I think we always knew the tone and we always knew the end and we knew the players. 
people got moved around at various times, and certainly in the editing, chunks got mm. moved. But I don't think this. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine that this movie was a shock to anybody in the in in the making of it. You know, we're all. So that's when you hand somebody Infinity War. Yeah, there's a certain know, promise where to the we're title, going. right? It's going to have a lot of characters, and you're, he's trying to collect stones because he wants to get rid of half the universe. That's all baked in to the to the cake, and it's a matter of you know where you go from there. Sure. Uh, where was Sharon Carter? Good question. There's in, a lot of in previous drafts, <laughs> right? had a, a couple of times. That's true. That's true. Well, Sharon Carter was a victim of what we came to realize as we were writing it, which is that if you're writing scenes that set up people before the story has gotten to them, uh, such as Steve and Sharon trying to make it work in an apartment, <laughs> they're gonna go because the movie does not have time to catch up previously on the life of Steve Rogers. Um, Once it became sort of a smash and grab type movie, uh, anything that wasn't on the main A plot about and in response to Thanos collecting stones, mostly got jettisoned. Yeah. Um, where, uh, was Hawkeye ever involved in part one, you know, Infinity War? No. Uh, I'm like, there, there could be a debate here. What? No. Well, no, I'm just thinking back to long, long ago well, drafts. I mean, way. everything has happened in drafts. We'll, we'll roll everybody out and road test them, but not in the... Not in the real. Once we landed on the movie to right. make, Every, we, you know, we've said this before. The idea that um, some characters w had have great stories um, in the second movie, and we we, want, we also gave ourselves permission to use both movies to tell complete arcs for the characters, and that might mean that you know somebody like Cap or Natasha, you might feel, oh, they didn't have quite as much to do as say Thor or Doctor Strange, and that surprises me. It's likely because they have a lot to do in the next one. I, I mean, if I was a betting man, and I know we're, you can't really talk about Avengers 4, I would imagine that Captain America has a bigger role in the second part. It's safe to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing to put all the money all on the that bet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, well, we could still change it. That's true. It's like yeah, I don't, I, could, I don't see it happening. Okay. I, I'm, I'm my gut feeling. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty okay. strong on this one. Um, how was Stormbreaker able to slice through a fully equipped Infinity Gauntlet? Is Stormbreaker more powerful than the f full Infinity Gauntlet? Well, he slices through the power of the Infinity Gauntlet. Sure, that's what he actually yeah. slices through the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. I imagine it might have something to do with the fact that the same guy made both of them. Right. So, was this debated? Like this kind of like talking about the power of each thing? Uh, I don't recall that actual debate. Um, because I think this, the actually cutting through the beam, came relatively late in that's the, true. In, the that's late. in the process. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's 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 dwarfen magic. Yeah, we dwarfen. Figure e ha can make what he likes for whom he likes, and uh, you know, why is there a three by three hole in the Death Star? That <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're trying to say that things need to push the plot forward? No, I'm just saying that I think eventually didn't they figure out that some of that Mads Mikkelsen designed a little. Uh, flaw in it so that you sure. can, yeah, there you go. Wait 20 years for the E-Tree movie where he secretly <laughs> plants a flaw in the glove. Um, the, the Russo brothers said in an AOL Build interview that Cap and Bucky's reunion in Infinity War wasn't their first since Bucky's mind uh, was healed. Sebastian mm. said uh, their first, their real world, their, fuck, I'm, I'm sorry for my swearing. Uh, how, what did you imagine their first reunion was like? Do you think it happened, uh, did it happen prior to the film? I think probably, uh, and that uh, in the two years that uh, Natasha, Sam, and Steve were insurgents, uh, they probably had cause to um, go back to Wakanda, hide out, move out from there, et cetera. So yeah, I think once Bucky uh, got that Shuri more or less was successful in sort of repairing his mind, there was a big, oh my God, I got that guy back, you know, moment. Yeah, at the, I mean, at the very least, Cap was aware of his progress. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they Skyped. Sure. Um, where, this is a question that uh, I definitely, uh, where was Hulk uh, just before the film starts when Thanos and his children are destroying the Asgardian ship? Mm. Because um, you think that if he came out sooner, he could have slowed the destruction down, but it's like, there's that moment, you know, we sure. have Hulk. Right, right, right. In the bathroom. Yeah. He was, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> yeah. He's right. Hulk, it takes a while. Right. Uh, 
Is it for dramatic effect that you need to? Oh, for sure. Oh, it's yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah, for dramatic yeah. effect. But you, it was you, also a plan on their part. You know, I think they were getting Thanos into position and then giving him the best chance to... Did, yeah. did this come up in debate, like, would Hulk have come out sooner? No, it's sort of the design of that opening scene. We want to make it clear you're not in, you know, it's not your father's old, Oldsmobile, right? It's, this is, uh, as, we want to announce Thanos as uh, the biggest villain in the MCU. He takes out previous, the previous reigning champion. Um, uh, and by defeating Hulk relatively savagely and easily, you're hopefully, there's a sense of dread over the course of the rest of the movie for all anyone who'll come up against him. And so that's just sort of a scene design. Sure. Uh, when writing, did you figure out the arc of the entire two movies? Like, talk a little bit about, this isn't really, a, uh, but did you figure out the arc of, of everything um, and then sort of go into the third? Like, talk a little bit about that process. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, we, I don't think, blah, blah, blah. We wrote both movies one after the other, but we plotted them out simultaneously so that we had one wall, movie one, one wall, movie two, or movie three and movie four, whatever you want to call them. Um, what and is we, the title of the fourth one anyway? It's a, it's uh, a good it question. is, yeah. I it's mean, just a throwing, story for another time. Right, just throwing it out there. It's called Marvel's Comedy Cavalcade. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, and, well, we knew we wanted them to be two separate movies, but we knew that it was one overarching thing. Um, so yeah, we built them all. We didn't like build a very vague one and then it's, we kind of built everything all yeah. at the same time. I, it, they were, by the time we started writing the first draft of the first movie, we had outlined the heck out of both movies. Um, and so it is, we always said that they are two separate movies. Clearly, the, it's a surprise to many people that the the villain wins, you know? We want it to be a complete experience. Clearly, they are related. Um, did you work backwards from the end of part four to see who would be vital um, to save in part three? That would seem a good idea <laughs> if we did that. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. that gives us so much credit. <laughs> no, I, well, yeah, it, it's, a, it's yeah, yeah, it, what story do you want to tell in four? It, it was really important to us. And point. how much emotional impact do you want to have at the end of one, you know? Sure. If you're only eliminating, my apologies to everyone who plays them, supporting actors, right. uh, people are going to know you pulled your, pulled your punch, which is why, you know, leaders of their own franchises yeah. have to go. No, completely. Yeah. Um, uh, wh how tough was it to figure out how the Avengers would actually beat Thanos in the next movie, because look, let's all kidding aside, mm. there's no way Thanos is going to walk away from this thing, having won. Couldn't he go two and zero? Oh? No. <laughs> so my question is, how tough was it to figure out how you? Because he, he, they came close to beating him in mm. Infinity War. Uh, uh, I mean, they, you could argue they real close. Mm. Um, so, but how was it to figure out? Because now half the people are gone. Right. You know, so it's a whole different. Okay, so your question assumes mm, facts, mm, not in evidence, mm -hmm, but I'll just mm -hmm, slide mm -hmm. past that. Right, okay. Uh, the design of movie two was uh, a pain in the ass. It's, it's a, there's a lot of work. It took us a long time to crack both movies and then to rewrite both movies over the course of 2016 and 2017. So um, we're really happy with where we landed. I think we're going to deliver a lot of things that people don't expect but might be delighted by and sad by. And uh, But it's... It's the biggest puzzle we've ever had to do. Well, especially because at the end of the, this movie, he has the gauntlet. Yeah. He has all the stones. Yeah. He is, I mean, how you know, ultimate power. power. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, seems like, uh, here's, this is something I've, I've wondered for a while. Uh, see, it seems like Thor is all powerful in some scenes and not as powerful in others. Mm. What's mm. happening with that? Uh, what scenes do you mean? Okay, well, for example, yeah. uh, when he's he's taking the, the brunt of the star yeah. when yeah. they're creating Stormbreaker, yeah. which is like, you would think he can only take so much of this, but mm. he takes a lot. He's, but then he's fighting Thanos, and Thanos can like came, comes this close to snapping his neck. Well, I think he's very durable. Like, I think literally his flesh is very hard to break. That's why he can survive in space. That's why he can take the thing of the star. But you can still drain him of energy. You can still knock him out. You can still hurt him. So... I think it would be very hard to to wreck his body, but I think you know he has stamina, and the stamina goes up or the stamina goes down depending on right. what he's been through. Right. 
Sure, but is this something that you guys have talked about? Like, what is his no, power I made that level? Up just now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how much more powerful is Stormbreaker over Molnar? Oh, uh, uh, you'd have to get a metallurgist. Well, uh, it can summon the Bifrost, yeah, that's, which is convenient, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, it's got, you know, it's got a hammer and and an axe. Yeah. Then, so rather than just smashing, you can chop things. Yeah. So in the kitchen, you know, carrots, cucumbers, great, <laughs> but also potatoes. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, did, did you have the conversation though? Is because that could be something that factors into the next movie. Yeah. The power level of his new hammer. Yeah. No, we had long conversations, long conversations. about. You know. So it's, again, when you when you if a, if a question Steve starts with that factors into the next movie is where I'm going to have to go. I understand. Ah. I, I understand. Um, do you think that uh, Iron Man and everyone would have beaten Thanos um, if Star Lord hadn't punched him? Uh, I think a lot of people. I, I do love this debate I've seen online of it's Star Lord's fault, it's mm. Doctor Strange's fault. Some people are saying it's, it's Thor's, Thor's fault. fault. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, everyone has a part to play in their failure. If Steve and Tony could have just gotten together, everybody would have been, you know, if Civil War hadn't happened, you know, the Avengers are united. Uh, there's there's plenty of blame to go around. And there's also, I mean, yeah, I maybe mean, there's nothing they could have done about it. Thanos trashed half the universe without the stones. Yeah. You know, I mean, he went from planet to sure. planet, slaughtering people. Uh, he's unbelievably powerful without the stones. I think they would have been very disappointed to get the glove off him and find he was still beating the living daylights out of them. Mm. Uh, how old is Thanos? Good question. Hmm. I think he's really old. Okay. Yeah. I like the way we're going. But mm. I don't know if I have a hard date for you. Is yeah. it something that you guys know and just can't say? Or is it something that it's just not something that you guys have figured out? We didn't really. I don't know if it mattered to us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what character or characters almost died, uh, but ultimately didn't in Infinity War? Can I answer that? I don't know if I can answer uh, that. Almost died. Almost died. I can't remember anybody who almost died because we were so bloodthirsty that when we got close to killing anybody, we just went, Pfft, kill them. <laughs> and there's so many of them. Like, right. Uh, no, it's more the reverse that some people uh, in earlier drafts made it to the next movie and we decided we didn't have enough story for them, and so mm. they uh, disappeared. Uh, are you guys done filming Avengers 4? Because I heard that in September there's additional photography. That's, I think that's true. Yeah. Mm. That's, so no, we're not done. We left a few things on the table, and there's certainly always reshoots and pickups and stuff totally, like that. Totally, yeah. yeah. And you so. learn a lot both from finally seeing the, mm -hmm. what the yeah. final first movie winds up being because you know even within knowing even that you have a unbelievably good script and then everything's shot very well and then you put it all together is and the you script get, that good is it <sighs> it's unbelievably good unbelievable. i've heard i this. cannot believe i don't it. know where i heard it but i heard it um there's still things you're going to pop out because it's yeah. like boy that seemed great all the way through uh, it's got to go and you know it may have it, that may have ripples in the next movie, so you go, okay, let's 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 adjust. Well, the other thing is that you know this is a, a film that you really couldn't show to people uh, in mm -hmm. advance. So yeah. my question is, did you guys, you you guys and the Russos, after it's been out, looking at what people are saying and having any sort of wow, we we totally can tweak this because of maybe what fans have said, or does that not even factor in? I, I, we try not to let it factor in. I mean, um, we are fans, and we try to service these fans, mm. right? If we go out of our way to scan the internet and find out what pockets of what uh, um, website want various things to happen, we'd be paralyzed because for everybody who wants, you know, Stephen Bucky to kiss, there's <laughs> another group that wants uh, Stephen Sharon to kiss. And, sure. you know, like, so I, I can't, we, we cannot be slaves to that. Sure. Are there any, sh any Sharon Bucky people out there? I don't know. What would Shuckies? you call Shuckies. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I definitely had some tweets with people asking about uh, Bucky's uh, 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 status sexually. I understand. Sharon, mm -hmm. what's going yeah. on with that? No, there's, I, there's a lot of people that well, want to know stuff. A, I can tell you this, Bucky, single. <laughs> <laughs> um, how come it took longer for certain characters to be dusted than others? 
Oh, part of that's a little dramatic license, right? Yeah. Because if everyone just flipped out like that, you wouldn't get these really powerful moments mm -hmm. like, you know, Peter Parker and, and Tony Stark. Uh, uh, you know. Did you, because that's the thing though, you would think when he activates the gauntlet, mm -hmm. it's instant. Everyone goes, you, now- Well, I mean, but why, we, why do we think that? Uh, that's true. Because of can, my knowledge of Infinity Stone. That's the thing. I mean, I think if we have license to make a slow wave across. Sure. Yeah, but know. was that something you guys debated, though? Being like, because for, for dramatic effect, it's much better to do it the way you guys do it in the sure, movie. I mean, we, but in actuality, yeah. it probably would have been all at once. We, like, actuality? Yeah. What do you mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this to the court of international. <laughs> in the comics, everybody's gone. Yes. And there is, yeah. there is some dramatic fun to that, where it's just like, they are just gone. Um, but you lose the emotional thing of people seeing other people. I think, I think you don't cry because uh, these characters are blipping out necessarily. As often, you're crying because of the reaction the characters who are left are having. Mm -hmm. That's what always gets me, is, is when someone else is watching uh, the love of their life or their best friend or whomever you know d drift away that's that shock and horror is what is what gets me more so than that person leaving the stage no for, for dramatic effect of course it yeah. had to be like this yeah, yeah. yeah um was the coda calling for captain marvel where did the idea for calling captain marvel at the end uh come from was that always going to be the tag because i know that there was debate that you weren't going to do anything after the credits. certainly thought about well, it we yeah. certainly you know do you want to give any hope and we wanted primarily not to because we didn't want you to go, ah, they're going to get out of jail free. Uh, it's it, why there's no mid-credit. Yeah. Right? It's, a, it's a tragedy. Yeah. And tragedies end in a, in a grim and sad way. Yeah. Um, we want you to sit with those eight, ten minutes of credits owning that movie and then give you just a little... I heard that mm -hmm. you guys showed the film to some people uh, without the after the credits tag at the end and people were not having it. Like they were really down on the film. We shot it late, so we did a bunch right. of tests. But I think also it. Marvel often screens without the tag. Sure. Because- What I'm saying is I heard the reaction was not as good as it normally is uh, because there was no hope. I mean. Frankly, the, re the test screenings for this were never going to be as good because it's, you know, Think of how you feel when you walk out it's of it. It's a tough night in the theater. Yeah, that's when you um, slide the paper over and go, can you rate these things for us? And we've just kicked you in the gut. So we always knew that it would, it would be, um, uh, we, we'd have to interpret things, uh, 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 we'd have to interpret what the audience is telling us, perhaps in a way that we didn't have to interpret other, other uh, tests. Sure. But I think also once, you know, because when we started on this, all we knew is they wanted to make a Captain Marvel movie, you know? Like, we, we started on this before they shot Guardians 2. So, like, all this stuff has been evolving in the other rooms while we're doing this, and we're getting little pieces of information where you go, oh, okay, now I have a different understanding of this. Right. And I think when it came, when they figured out that, and this is out, I don't think it's a uh, uh, period. Oh yeah, it's period. Yeah, we know that. That it's yeah. it. You know. Oh, that's it, out. Yeah. It takes place in the past. Fury's in it. They they're you know they interact. Suddenly we realize that there is a pre-existing. Mm -hmm. It's more than just a you know oh that one's not dead and he's getting up and he's gonna you know, it's. It's hinting at a whole path of story that isn't in the movie. Sure. So it's like seemed legit. This so my next question is obviously Captain Marvel is in the second part and they're making the movie now, what were those conversations like in terms of figuring out her powers and knowing, because it hasn't been seen before on screen and usually the first director gets to sort of have some fun with it yeah. in terms of figuring things out, but you guys are gonna be the first ones to show her. We were in the position we were in with Spider-Man. And right? Panther. And Panther, uh, where um, Brie was gonna have to shoot her, her scenes, I think it's okay to say, uh, before she shot Captain Marvel. So I can't really talk about um, what we decided, but it was clearly a conversation we had to have with Ryan and Anna, who didn't exist yet <laughs> before when we started that process, right? So you're bringing directors on um, who have, who and, and asking like, tr we're, we're trying to set up something that is going to work for our movie and won't screw up their movie. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's another thing is that uh, when you were making this, you could not have any idea that Black Panther was gonna no. become the cultural zeitgeist moment. So right. my question is, uh, because Black Panther's in the movie for like 
a fraction, like, you know, a little bit, key part, little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you think, had you known that Black Panther was gonna be such an iconic movie and so popular, do you think he would have had a, maybe a bigger role had you known, or is it sort of, you know what I mean? It's debatable. Wakanda has a pretty big role. Right. I mean, totally. Wakanda, um, but you know what I mean, though, yeah. that the character. Again, it's, it's, uh, it's about fan service, and we are the fans that we service. So yes, clearly, there was a huge outcry to a really good movie, and bringing in a whole segment of the audience that maybe hadn't gone to some Marvel movies before. And we couldn't have been more excited to see that. It also made us feel kind of smart for putting a lot of Wakanda in the movie in the third <laughs> act. Because remember, that's not a slam dunk. Right but now. I also think, you know, believe people wanting more. You know, yeah. if they had a ton of, of Panther, not long ago, and yes, everybody wants more, but had we given them more, hmm. it might seem like, ah, they're just, you know, they're going back to the well because they know people like, you know, like, right. no, I get there's, no, there's no winning. Yeah. Right. Getting back to the coda, what were the other things you were considering besides that beeper scene calling uh, Captain Marvel? Mm. I don't think we were. I mean, we always. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you when you end it like that, there aren't too many extra places you can go, and I mean, a lot of the time, Marvel's tags have pointed to the next movie coming or something like that. Um, and well, the next movie coming is Ant Man and Wasp, which, by the nature of that franchise, is lighthearted. And you don't want to go. Uh, but meanwhile, <laughs> remember Paul Rudd? Still adorable. You know, it's just totally sure. everything was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, no, so it, listen, the, that yeah. that tag scene yeah. works. Uh, I was just curious if there was. Yeah, no, it, and it really it's selfish about it for us because we want to give a little hope to people, and that was the best way we could think of to do it. Completely. Um, uh, which characters did you want to uh, that you wanted to write to meet up but didn't get a chance because of the story? Like, what came close? Did you ever have, you know? Oh, I liked, uh, I liked a draft we had where Peter Parker met Natasha and sort of oh, this, yeah, this world weary woman that. who, you know, has all this red in her ledger, you know, is and this, this fresh faced kid. Uh, there was a lot of fun. There's at least one really good conversation that, you know, because we restructured things, couldn't, couldn't work. Mm. That was cool. In part, in Infinity War. <laughs> I'm making a joke here. I, I, yeah, there's always a future. Uh, was there any other, are there any other meetups or any other I'm characters? I think um, there was an, a fun sequence in a very old draft uh, with uh, Wanda and Rocket. Oh yeah, where they they were fun together, but it was also it required you know it, obviously there's you know one space one's here sure. it required a giant right. mangling of plot. Right. How many drafts did you write? Mm. Is there a number? Yeah, it's, it's weird after a while because you're just adjusting constantly. But I think there's sort of official seven or eight of each movie, but there's far more than that. Though. What was yeah. the title of the second movie again? Uh, right. Marvel's right. Comedy with right. a K, Cavalcade with a C. <laughs> Got it. Just, just curious. Yeah. Uh, am I wrong, or did Gamora, Gamora's backstory change a little bit from what was established in Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one? Mm. We tried not to. Because I believe in so, Guardians of the Galaxy, in the first one, she talked about seeing her mom killed in front of her. I could be wrong about so this. So are you nitpicking about I mean, where she she's was, facing? She was killed I am nitpicking her. where I am nitpicking. I'm, I'm comfortable with what we've done. Yes. <laughs> sure. I, 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 I think those two don't necessarily get Yeah, I think, we are, I think we're safe. I, okay, just going in full nitpick mode. <laughs> um, please, please. Who came up with the idea to bring Red Skull back? Uh, was that always part of the plan, or was it a late it's addition to the always story? been part of the we, plan. It, we it, haven't always known where to put him. Yeah, we, we insisted. <laughs> it so. was, yeah, when we real, you know, obviously we started with him 10 years ago, and he had the Cosmic Cube, which mm. was then referred to sometimes as the Cosmic Cube, and we didn't know it was one of the Infinity Stones. Mm -hmm. um, and to be able to bring that all back around because, you know, there were there were drafts of First Avenger where he more clearly died and or was blown to pieces by the thing. And but he in the final movie, he's clearly taken somewhere. Yeah. And that was just sitting there. And the thought that we could. OK, he's you know, yes, he's out there. He's out there geographically. He's 
obsessed with the stones and so is Thanos. Like there's, there were too many yeah. things saying, put him in it. And some people went, that's a bridge too far. And then we went, he's a purple man collecting stones. But there's no bridges. <laughs> right. right. I agree with that. I mean, put yourself in our position. Like when we start, we start while we're shooting Civil War. So Chris and I go back every afternoon and start reading comics and coming up with all the possible blue sky scenarios. And one of the missions was make it as big as you can. That's Infinity War. That's the promise of it. So we had him still out there. And as we kept moving along, we realized we needed a, this is a screenwriting thing now, like we needed someone to be the voice of expertise when they get to the mystery stone and someone you believed when he told you what the rules were. And that could be, it could be anybody, but now a scene's doing more than one thing because it's providing you with this delight that this character's back and it's giving you this voice of expertise and giving you the rules for what you're about to see. Completely. Um, one of my favorite bits in Winter Soldier is the way, and I've said this before, is the mm. way you, you guys delivered exposition at a key moment that had to be delivered mm. while still keeping pushing the plot forward, which is when they're in the bunker. Yeah. So Why do they stay in the idea. bunker? Same idea, same you know? idea, yeah. He gives, Red Skull gives exposition, not unlike the way that Zola gives exposition. Yeah, yeah. completely. And I, I love else. that scene in the bunker. Um, uh, is there a possibility of Vision still being part of the Mind Stone since Suri was unable to finish what she was doing? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm Pass. <laughs> I'm teasing in certain <laughs> questions to try to push forward uh, four. How did you decide who was going to be dusted and who wasn't? Uh, it's based on the story for four. Yeah, it's based on the story for four and wanting to have an intense emotional impact. You know, you don't you don't want to you don't want to be accused of having red shirts. So you're sure. like, oh, we got to know that know that new character just so that you know you could dust them. It was. When did you know that Captain Marvel was going to be a part of uh, the Infinity War movies? I mean... I, I, I think it was always up to us to whether to use her or not. Yeah, so, I mean, we knew... She, I mean, she was on the slate. I think she was announced on the same day as... And she probably got moved around. No, I, but it, in that, on that day at the El Cap when Kevin said... Yeah, he probably put her on the slate. Yeah, I think, I think she yeah. was there. Yeah. Um, Again, if it's Infinity War, we're going to try to put everyone in that we can, and we start with a big appetite, and we winnow mm -hmm. it down, and, you know. Sure. Um, uh, will time travel be involved at all in part four? Can you say, or can you, I'm, you can't even talk about it? I can't I even talk enough. about it. Yeah. I mean, you know what time, I'm going to make a joke. All right. Uh, I don't even know what time it is, let alone. Uh, after using the gauntlet, did Thanos pay a physical price for using all the stones at once? Yeah, yes, he did. it looks like it, right? No, because when I saw it, the second time, I noticed his yeah. arm mm. had stuff going on, and I wasn't sure if it was dirt or if this was a physical price. No, I for think they, that's an immense amount of energy. And there's a reason why other people haven't done this, because I think it'll kill you. Yeah. Um, right. So the strongest guy in the universe has to be the one to do it, and yeah. I do think it, I don't think he's gonna be doing much with that arm. Yeah, it's a believability thing, we wanted you to, you right. know, we always so, try to ground this stuff. So basically, this could be one of the ways that you know, factors into the future in terms of he's not, is he as strong now after using that gauntlet or does he have more vulnerability? But can we he introduce not use the stones to give himself a new sort of strength? But he's, and, and when he snapped his fingers, he was in Wakanda where we already saw somebody get an artificial arm. Maybe he's now got a vibranium <laughs> Bucky arm. Sure. Only it's little because it's Bucky's arm. So he's got a sort of weird little Bucky <laughs> arm. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Yeah. Will I? No. <laughs> Will I? Uh, let's see, why not? about the stuff that was written in the script that uh, wasn't filmed but came close? Mm. Oh. Well, there's all sorts. That's, that's we yeah. Went, we went through um, draft after draft of certain certain things. I mean, got close. I'm talking about like the stuff that came really close to we being got filmed. really close. So, uh, I don't even have a good answer. I don't, that. I mean. We tried a few. Oh, we. we I don't know how close it got. We did more with his backstory, you know, where we showed a little bit more about um, the decision he made, the, what he was trying to do on Thanos, uh, sorry, on Titan back in the mm. day. Um, I guess we jettisoned it before we really got to shooting, but that was, inter and it turns out we didn't need it. I mean, I think people understand what his, yeah. his uh, mission is. We certainly spent time on it. Well, what I really want to uh, get into, obviously, is uh, deleted scenes. So what, right. what was stuff that you actually shot that didn't make the finished film. 
Are you allowed to say? Uh, We're not allowed to say all of them. We're not allowed to say all of them, and some of them... Is it because that some of that might actually still be used in the, in the next one? Yep. Got it. Sometimes, yeah. and also... I don't know. Sometimes they're just not good. Yeah, we don't, wanna, we don't want. We don't want. But I mean, there's a lot of. Well, what can you say that was filmed <laughs> that could end up on the Blu-ray? That's a good one on the Blu-ray. I will say, I don't know that this is ending up on the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. well, I probably shouldn't say it. Then. I like the idea of talking about it. You guys want to huddle up? No, I don't think we can. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, okay. No. Curses. Uh, we were so yeah, close. I know. Uh, <laughs> sorry. This is we may. You know. uh, there were. Con I mean. Because Russo's told me there are deleted scenes. There are. Well, I just don't know deleted. which ones they're picking. There are definitely right? deleted scenes. So if scenes. I say one and they don't put it on the Blu-ray, now it's a thing. So oh, for yeah, sure. I got it. Right. We'll do I a follow-up on this once we, I can find out. We yeah. shot an entirely different... Are you being serious? Yeah, no, this okay. is absolutely I'm serious. I'm completely we, nervous right we now. We shot a... Uh, one, we shot it like an unbelievably long version of Tony and Pepper in the park. Oh, did. That uh, featured cameos, and it was sort of... Robert and his Robert and his friends day at the park sure. went a little crazy, and then no one ever turned the camera off, and it was. Now these are like cameo, like like celebrities in real life, or like other superheroes. Uh, people from MCU characters. MCU characters okay. from their world, plus uh, Joe Russo. Oh, oh that yeah, was Joe his, Russo had a cameo yeah, there. Yeah, there that's is. right. Um, that's right. And it got kind of out of control and was. It was off plot entirely. And so we went back and we wrote one that was in a different place that was on, you know, much more on tonally on plot uh, and took place in a different place. It was Tony and Pepper. And we shot it and it was kind of lovely, but it, it got you off on the wrong foot with Tony. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like he knew the movie was about to happen. Right. Um, sure, I got it. So we went back to a an edited down version of that park scene. But no, I, I I have vivid memories of shooting that shooting and writing that scene. You'll never see probably, or maybe it'll be. You know. um, how did the other Marvel filmmakers contribute to the script and uh, dialogue? I know James Gunn contributed mm. a little bit with Guardians. Uh, or, well, a bit, we yeah. we wrote a. We wrote the script several times, and then we let James see the Guardian scenes, and he made some suggestions. Um, and uh, Taika, we brought in. We had a we had a nice sit down with Taika and Chris Hemsworth because one, we hadn't seen uh, Ragnarok, so it's a pretty it's radically a different change. Thor. Yeah, sure. so we needed. Um, and we're starting that our script well before they've even written that and shot it so the the fact that he's being retoned mm -hmm. so dramatically was something that third or fourth draft we had yeah. to sort of work we through. had pretty constant contact with nate moore who was producing uh panther mm -hmm. across town yeah so he's Atlanta. telling us sure he's gonna pop she's really cool <laughs> yeah, she's really yeah, good man kind of stuff. Yeah. you um, might want to put some sherry in there. right um i'm, I'm we're, we've run really long so i'm gonna sure. breeze through some of these things real fast lightning round yeah exactly we're into the <laughs> lightning round was thanos only able to beat hulk because he had the power stone or uh, was he already that powerful i think he could i i may be speaking out of turn i think Th thanos could kick the hulk's ass without the stone yeah okay uh i've already asked you about how old is thanos um talk a little bit about the timeline of this is a, a question uh mm -hmm. that i was wondering after seeing it again uh the timeline of thanos getting the gauntlet and the stones. Uh, when was the gauntlet made? Was it when Loki was pretending to run, to pretending to be Odin? You know what I mean? Um, uh, what became of Xandar? Uh, right. I think the gauntlet was made, yes, probably when Loki was pretending to be Odin because... Idris not aware that it's... Yeah, and no one's heard of, you know, they presumably, Idris was running a regular, relatively regular business there and people would come there for things and Somebody would have said something. Um, so it hasn't been that long. Um, I forgot the other question. Uh, what became of Xandar? Uh, yeah, well, we certainly did drafts where we went to Xandar, got a stone. Uh, and uh, again, it, the problem of six MacGuffins is, it, you know, it's, it is, the challenge was always how to not have the same scene six times. Yeah. It uh, also, it necess like if you were going to do it, it had to be kind of gigantic because it was Thanos versus the Nova Corps, yeah, you know. Sure. That's a big thing. And 
it wasn't giving you enough on the character on on a character level to justify the amount of space it That's was right. going to take. You'd have to really care about did Glenn you, Close. How close did you come to to making that scene? Did, that was only in the script. Phase, that was only that script was only and really script. early on. I think Got early it. on, you know, everyone went, all right, let's if we have to put one off screen, that's the one. Uh, Adam Warlock is a big part of the comic books mm -hmm. in terms of solving the problem. Yeah. Um, uh, how is it going against somebody as powerful, uh, someone you know, like Thanos without Adam Warlock in play? Uh, well, you'll have to root for characters that you've come to love over 10 years. That's, sure. always, that's always the easy answer, right? Like, we're not gonna introduce Adam Warlock and have everyone turn to him and say, you solved this problem, new guy, right? We want um, the problem to get solved. Uh, or not or not, by people who you've come to love. Sure. Uh, I've heard, and you probably can't answer this, that there's a little bit of animosity between the TV side and the film side at mm. Marvel. Um, it's just point blank. I mean, yeah. this is just knowledge. Uh, was that, is that one of the reasons why we're not going to see the characters from the TV side? Or was it some, like, how we, close did oh, that come? Oh, we talk about that all the time. No, yeah. not, not, I don't know any about animosity. I mean that um, in a movie this big, uh, you know, we certainly had the conversation, should we put Luke Cage in this, you know, here we are in New York, that kind of stuff. Um, but as you could probably tell, it would be just a glorified cameo at this point. You know, we're trying to, to honor the, the MCU movies, and if we then further tell the audience, mm -hmm. oh, you should also have a good knowledge from this streaming service over here that you may or may not be subscribing to, it's really asking a lot. We're it's, already asking a lot. Sure, it's very funny though because I think there's so many people who would be so happy just to see even a cameo in the back I of know. Luke and Daredevil fighting. Oh, but fighting. you'll have just as many people going, that's all you gave Luke Cage? But that's the problem, <laughs> yeah, is that if you put them in, as half of us will be so happy, I know. and yeah. the other half will be so pissed. Right. Yes, exactly. you know, I mean, there's no winning. There's no winning. There's no, there's no winning. winning. And it's also, you know, you know, they'll have, they'll have seasons next year. Sure. You know, we couldn't bring in that many people and not blip a bunch of them because just on an on an odds wise thing. I have no idea what they'll do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, okay, next year, Daredevil starring Foggy. Foggy. Yeah, Rosario <laughs> Dawson. Yeah. Sure. Which would be fantastic <laughs> if you put on the costume, <laughs> but you know, it's all confusing. Was there ever any talk about putting Brie Larson at the end of the movie in that coda scene? It was always going to be the pager. Uh, we want Marvel to be introduced in her own movie. Got it. Yeah. Um, uh, this is my, probably my last question. Uh, describe the first day uh, when you sat down to write the script. Well, we had very detailed outlines at that point. Yeah. So it, it's not that romantic. Yeah, it's, it's not so despairing. I would say that the overwhelming day you might be looking for is when you, you get into the, we have this bunker, right? It's a, it's a conference room and we just have everything on the walls. And at one point- How hard is it to get in that room? Pretty hard, actually. Not everybody. It's at hard to get in the in. building. Well, no, and then I think not everyone has the swipey thing. Oh yeah, yeah, thing. that room. But um, at one point, uh, they made some poor PA make baseball cards of everybody who was in the Marvel universe and put a little magnet on the back, and then had this magnet wall that had everybody on it. And that's where you you walk in and go, oh, that's too many people. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that it, that gets a little overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, that's really funny. I'm always curious though about like so who had access to that room where all the real stuff is. Is it very like, it's we're so, talking yeah, five it's, people? It, oh, I mean, I various mean, people were invited in, yeah. including several physicists. That's right, that's right. We had a good- Mainly uh, just to say that we met with physicists. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's probably, I don't know, 10 people, I don't know. All right, no, totally. Hey, listen, um, I really appreciate you going deep on this. Thank you, sir, anytime. I, I look forward to doing this again in a year when yes. we can talk about the, how, how Thanos was defeated. If he, oh, if he was, it. right. Exactly. Uh -huh. No, but seriously, thank you both so much. Thank Congrats you, on the box office and everything. Cheers. For Thanks, real. Sir. Thank you.